Hi friends and welcome back to Lemon Tree Corner. This week in the studio we are going to be starting on a brand new bag. We are making the Swoon Evelyn bag. So this is kind of like another tote bag. It's got these cool handles that go all the way underneath and I think it's got a pocket on the inside. So I think we're making the handbag size which is 12 by 10 and a half by four and a half and it does have the normal lining <laughs> so no drop in lining for this one so very excited about that and these are the fabrics we're going to use this is the exterior fabric and the interior fabric and not sure what I'm doing with the handles yet if I'm going to make them out of the lining fabric or maybe uh, do a cork handle we'll see I haven't thought that all the way through yet but excited to get started on this project the long arm quilter is done with our Hawaiian quilts and is sending it back. So I'll share that with you when I get it back and I have to make all the binding strips and sew the binding on and then that'll be ready to use. So very excited to see what that looks like and um, yeah, get it in my hot little hands. As always, thanks to you who are subscribers and if you hit the little bell for notifications, you'll see whenever I release a new video. And the best way to support me is either to check out items in the shop if you're in the market for a purse or a project bag or some progress keepers. Or you can also buy me a coffee. Um, it's a special website, kind of like a super chat where you can donate something. You can buy me a fancy coffee or a yard of fabric or a skein of yarn. Uh, just something fun to support if you're interested in doing that. So I'll leave the links in the description below if you're interested in that. So uh, thank you for joining me this week. I hope you have fun and let's get going. basically using all of my larger 14 by 14 design boards to hold all of those pouches we cut out the pencil pouches so I don't have any place to put these I'm gonna order a new Lori Holt cutting mat just because I'm sick of looking at this purple and pink every single video I do see that's like over the edge already okay so basically the only thing I'm using the exterior for is the main panels and the side panels I'm sure there's probably there's probably a pocket or something we need to cut the handles I'm supposed to be doing I'm supposed to be doing all of this out of the lining fabric so the handles and everything and these top panels so I don't know I kind of want to do the bottom panel out of the lot of the exterior. I don't understand why I wouldn't have the bottom panel out of the exterior. So there's that. So we are doing the handbag size. So you get the handle, handle stripes, bottom support, zippered pocket. See, and it still wants the lining, but I'm like, I don't know why I'm doing that out of the lining. The zipper pocket. The zipper pocket's in the interior. I think I'm going to do it out of this. So we've got 9 by 12, and then we have some zipper tabs. Of course, the piece I cut is too short for the side panels, but let's see what we can get out of this. And it's 12 by 15 and a half, so we can easily get the 9 by 12 out of this. Yeah, my throat is still all, I still feel, sounds stuffy, even after a week, two weeks. So, 
probably gonna have to set up an appointment to go see an ENT because I'm just like hopped up on allergy pills and decongestants and yeah, you know, it says two lining. I don't know why it says two lining. Why wouldn't I want the bottom out of this? I'm gonna make the bottom out of this. That just seems a bit ridiculous. So let's make the bottom match the sides. Plus my lining, fa oh, that was off. I'm out of practice. My lining fabric is totally um, light. I don't necessarily want the lining fabric as the bottom of the bag. It's just going to get really dirty. And of course I have my dishwasher on. Saturday is the day of chores. Oh my goodness. I'm just off. Alright, the bottom panel. <clears throat> Okay, here's where I'm gonna be screwed. Um, <clears throat> so I haven't cut out the handles yet, or the handle stripes, and that's like, two of them are four by 20, and then two more two by 18. So that's gonna take up a big majority of my piece that's left. But, I also have all these other pieces to cut. So, let's cut off the salvage and see what's left after that. Because the other option we have is that I make the handles out of cork. Um, just like we did with that lemon bag that we made. So I can make the handles out of cork. I do have a pink cork and a natural cork with pink metallic bits in it. So that's a possibility. So what I think I need to do is I need to cut out all of these pieces first. So we've got the panel overlay. But I am going to need a piece. Well... The handle stripes could also be out of the cork. Um, so I need two more of these panel overlays. I need two of this top lining. And I need four of these top zipper panels. So the question is, if I cut all of this out, you know, am I going to have enough for at least the handle stripes? And if I'm not going to have enough for both, then what's the point? And maybe this would just look better. I mean, this is what I was going for. Was this all out of... And I already made the connectors. I already cut these out, which means I should do the handle stripes out of this fabric. Um, the actual handles can be cork. That's way easier to do. It's sewing the cork down onto the body of the bag that's a little more difficult. And since I already made the connectors, I'm thinking I should cut this. Okay, so that would be two pieces that are two by 18, <clears throat> which is pretty much going to be this whole bottom here, it goes to 21. So I'm gonna need to cut these out. 
but I only need two by 18. So that's not bad. Okay. So let's go ahead. Of course, that's not the rod. Let's see if I can cut this first. That's good. Okay, so then I actually have what I need. I like just barely have what I need out of this. <coughs> I got the zipper tabs, I got the pockets already. So I need two more of these. We already did the connectors, so I just need these three pieces left. Okay, yay! I think we did it. I just, you know, picked the fabric out with the assumption that I was making all the pieces out of this fabric. And it did say that, you know, for the handbag size, all we needed was a yard of this fabric. And I'm using it and using it and using more of it and going, um, I don't know that I'm going to have enough. So that's a good tip for you right there is if you're going to have to get something long like handles, out of the fabric, you gotta make sure that you do that before you cut all of these pieces. Because, you know, if I had just cut all of these pieces, then we wouldn't have had enough fabric. Do I have enough for this? Yes, okay, let's cut all, all of them out. So yeah, you wanna make sure that you have your handles cut out while the piece is still long like this because if you don't then you might you know you might be in trouble later after you've cut everything out and you go oh no the handles and you've got like a piece like this you know what I mean like a short piece that's not gonna work for the handles you can sew them together but yeah I wanna make sure you have what you need and like I was saying a minute ago it would have been easier for me to make the handles out of something else because for these pieces these all go with the pattern they're all you know they're all supposed to be out of the same fabric so for me to cut the panel overlay out of different fabric or cork versus the handles at least the handles makes it look like a conscious choice that I chose to make cork handles versus, um, oh crap, I ran out of fabric, you know. So that's what you wanna think about when you're doing these things, is planning ahead. That's also why I like having the pattern pieces, even if I don't have a pattern piece, making a pattern piece is handy, because I'm such a visual person that it's hard for me to visualize like what I have left if I'm not doing it this way. also put Peltex on the lining piece. Um, I was supposed to cut out two of the bottom pieces in the lining fabric, but I didn't want to do that. So I attached the foam to the exterior. I'm going to attach the Peltex to the interior, just because that doesn't already have anything. So what we've done is we drew a line and we press these towards the center. And now we need four of them, so we have to cut these in half. So each piece is going to be nine inches. So we're going to end up with four pieces of that. I've also pressed my handles. So I've got those ready to, to sew. For some reason, I like to get the handles out of the way early. It's just easier for me. OK, now everything in the pattern is written for the tote size, so we have to be careful that we look in the parentheses for our handbag size here. Now remember I did the fold, so I'm going to have to fold over this part, this overhang, in order to get the true center there. Okay, so the outside of the line. So we're going to start at the bottom here. We're going to line that up. 
And then we are going to take it and sew that down. And then this one's going to be to the outside of that line. Okay, so I had this nice light pink. Now I have these really cool things that um, keep the bobbin and the thread together. I mean the bobbin and, yeah, the bobbin and the thread together so that I know which one's which because I've got a million colors. So this is a really cool trick. I can link these down below. Um, they just poke in there and then your bobbin sits on top. So you always have the correct color together and you don't have to guess which color is which. So I have a lot of colors that are very close to each other and it would be very hard to tell which bobbin went with which spool. <clears throat> and this is usually what takes the most time when sewing is switching out the thread colors when I'm top stitching. But I really do like to be matchy matchy. So I take the time to do this. This is what brings me joy is finding just the right thread color to go with the fabric. And the Juki 2010 does have a um, automatic threader but it stopped working very soon after I bought the machine so what we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up on the bottom in fact I should probably sew from the bottom I'm gonna do this correctly okay so we're gonna line this up just covering that line because we don't want to have to see it and then we'll worry about the other side after that. Pretty much just getting this side down first. And I'm going to top stitch it down. And it's that easy. Okay. So now we're going to go down the other way. This is the nice thing about the Juki. 2010 is that the foot is actually a scant quarter inch so I can line it up on either side of the foot when I do the top stitching and I'm going to have the same result so I'm just going to line it up and then we're going to do the same with the other side and then we're going to sew the overlay on which is very interesting. I haven't done that before and it's a raw edge so I'm curious how we're gonna achieve that effect. Okay, I'm not gonna lift you up because I think we're going right back to the sewing machine after this. Um, so we're gonna take these two overlay pieces right sides together, sew along the curved edge at half an inch seam allowance. That's interesting. So we're basically wasting a whole piece of fabric in order to get this bottom curve. Hmm. Normally when we do something like this, it just, you know, we press it under, but it's such an interesting curve that I think that's why we're doing it this way. But we're only gonna sew on this bottom curve. Okay, so this is pretty easy. I'm gonna start with the edge we want to be perfect just so that it's perfect. So we'll do this at an eighth of an inch. That's nice. Unfortunately, I picked the side that I pressed a little too far over. I'll have to double check the other one. Um, it's only something I would notice, but you know how that goes. You've been there. Okay, so that was easy enough. Um, that's a very easy way to add a nice accent to the bag, make it a little different. Um, I don't know how we would do this in cork because we can't press it under. We'd probably have to sew it this way, flip it, and then like top stitch it. 
down. Um, and we wouldn't want to use two pieces because that's way too much bulk. But I'm just wondering how we can achieve the same effect with, um, with cork because I think that would look really nice with the cork. I don't understand why we had to cut four of them out. Uh, this seems like a waste of fabric, especially for a straight edge like that. We could have easily just gone like that and like that and had one piece of fabric. So I'm not quite sure why we feel it necessary to do it this way, but this is, this is the way. Yeah, this is one thing I really appreciate about swoon patterns is they just have all these fun little details that it's not like they take a ton of extra time to add, but they just add so much character to the bags. It's great. <clears throat> okay, now we're to the connectors. So we've got our four connectors with the stabilizer and four connectors with the SF-101. We're going to put them back to back and we're going to sew down this way. Are we stopping there? I've done another one like this before which was just so complicated to stop there. We're doing this the weird way like we did last time. So I'm just going to mark where this comes back up. Yeah, I remember these were really difficult to turn out last time we did this. So I'm hoping we will fare better this time around. Okay, right, so we're going to trim this seam down to about an eighth of an inch. Only where we actually did the stitching. Which is interesting. You can't really see my stitches here, but I try to get as close to the Peltex as I could. Okay, now we gotta flip this out. So this is gonna be difficult. This is what happened last time. I might need the um, hemostat for this. Oh, it's just gonna be hard to grab that point and pull it through. I don't want to break anything, but in order to get hooked onto something, I'm going to have to pull. Yeah. Just don't know. That's possible with the Peltex there. That's really difficult. This is why I don't like doing this. It would have just been easier to press the edges under and top stitch. I don't know why we do things like this. Oh my goodness. The Peltex just makes it harder to push out because it's so much thicker. There we go. I think I got it. And now we're just we're gonna have to press these under and top stitch anyway, which I feel like we could have just done that from the beginning. Okay, so for some reason I picked out an inch and a half hardware, I think, because I was looking at the tote size. So I'm going to have to see if I have um, inch hardware. Is that the one I just bought? I just bought half inch. Uh-oh. Let me see what I have. Plus, I picked a rainbow zipper. So technically the hardware should be rainbow. Let's go see. I so just got lucky, although I don't know if these are the same thickness. Let's see. I am going to order that um, those frames from Emmeline Hardware now that I'm home. So any hardware that I need, I can go ahead and order that. Looks like I need some one inch hardware here. They are the same. Yay! Huzzah! Okay, so we're going to do this and fold this under and then we're going to top stitch all the way around under one inch. So I think I'm pretty much doing it under to where the Peltex starts. I'm going to have this raw edge though, so I'm going to have to clean that up. Oh, 
we start here. So I think this is going to be like the other spoon bag I made, um, or the Emmeline bag I made, where these are just decorative. It's not, you know, these are just going to be the connectors. They're going to be sewn down onto here. And it's just going to look like this was all one piece when it's not really. Okay, so we have our four tabs sewn. I just kind of started around here, went all the way around with my zipper foot. Works really good. Only problem is, is once you tilt this here, your zipper foot's like off the fabric. So you have to, um, you have to be really slow until the zipper foot comes back down again. But other than that, it worked. I don't really know why we need the Peltex in here. I mean, the Peltex just made it so that this is kind of looking weird. <clears throat> and if we hadn't used the Peltex, that would have been fine. And if we're sewing them down, then I don't understand. Yeah, I feel like if we were if we're just sewing these down anyway, why did it need the Peltex? The Peltex just seemed I guess cuz this is going to flap up and it just has some extra body to it. But I don't know. I could have gotten that with Decoville, which would have been a lot easier to work with than this. Okay, well it's supposed to be a little further in than this. The teeth aren't supposed to be sticking out like that, but that's as good as I got it. So I've tacked this side down now because that was the problem I had the first time and I had not tacked it down. So we're gonna do the second one. And this time we're gonna try and even them out here. Because I wanna make sure that I've got my panels even. Okay, these just never seem to work out for me. Part of me is tempted to wait until my order of um, zipper ends come in. But this one might work. This one's a little bit wider than the zipper. So that's good, except these are sticking up a little bit. I think I'm going to do it this way. Those are on the back end. So they're not going to be visible because I think my folds on this side... No, they look about the same. Still looks better than other ones that I've done. Okay, well that's not too bad. These are a little off. Oh, it's it. I think it's more of the zipper. If the zipper had been back further, it would have looked better. Okay, that's it for that. I decided to double stitch it here, um, just to, since it's a half inch seam allowance, just to get it tacked down and more reinforced. Uh, recently, one of my YouTubers was talking about cooking and how once you know the basics of how things work when you're cooking, you know, like the actual chemistry reactions and that kind of thing, then you can more easily make adjustments on your own and not necessarily follow the recipe to a T if you would like something to be different and that you would, can do that on the fly once you have the techniques down. And I thought, oh, that applies to sewing too. Once you know the general techniques, you can definitely um, change things on the fly. You don't necessarily have to follow the pattern if you have a better way of doing something that's been proven over time. So that was nice.
So we have these top pieces that we're going to sew in. So we're going to have our going to have our zipper panel and then we're going to sew it in between these two like we did on that other bag. Question is, do I want it opening up with this one? Do I want I guess I want both zippers on the same side. Half an inch seam allowance. That seems like a lot. Because this piece isn't big enough to handle a half an inch seam allowance. Yeah. Okay, half an inch seam allowance. So we're going to sew this one down first. Try and get it centered. And then sew that at half an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to sew this at half an inch seam allowance. So we make a little sandwich again. I sewed it upside down. Okay, so we're gonna take all of that apart and do it over again. Okay, and here we have our zipper panel which means the only thing left to do is to do the gusset. Sew the gusset all the way around the edge. And um, that's gonna take my full concentration. So I'm gonna end it here for today and pick this back up again when I can focus on the gusset without messing it up. So I do have my um, quilt binding that I need to cut and I need to look at a video because I can't remember if I'm doing one and a half or two inch I think it's one and a half, but I can't remember so I'm gonna watch a video cut out the binding Look what came in the mail My quilt is back Okay, my voice is almost gone now, but here's the quilt. Yay! Believe it. This is gonna be. I. I still don't know how I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna have to find it on the machine. How pretty! Wow. I'll have to lay it out on the bed and take a picture. <laughs> this is all she had left after she squared it all off. Wow. Oh, this is so cool. It's so cool to like see it all come together, you know? Wow. Okay. So she went with the pentagraph that I picked, which is really simple. Lots of loose threads. I'll have to go through and pick out all these loose threads, but look at that. It's so gorgeous. That's a really cool pattern. I don't know if you can, now that I lifted you up so high, let's bring you back down. Can you see that? Gorgeous pattern, very cool. And then it's barely noticeable on the front, which is what you want. You want your fabric to shine through. But that's so cool. Wow, that's so neat. So we've got our little quilt sandwich here, and now I have to make the binding to bind all the way around. And then I also have to get a label. Oh, I just ordered from Fat Quarter Shop. I think they had labels that I could sew in. So I'm gonna have to put my name on the back here and like make a little label to sew on for future generations. That's so cool. So it's kind of like a heart. I don't know if you can see that. Kind of like a heart shape, but very cool. Yay! So that means I gotta start getting to work so that I can put this on our bed. Wow, it's so exciting!
Hey friends, so thanks for joining me this week. We are finished. Let me show you the finished bag. So this beautiful bag, I think it turned out really great with these accent details are really nice. They didn't quite line up, but um, yeah, I think maybe one of them lined up, but it's very cute. I like the details and the handles. Handles are a little short. I keep forgetting that I like longer handles. I should just automatically add more length to every handle. So I'll make a note in the pattern about that. We've got our little boxy bottom there, gusset bottom, and our inside pocket, and our gusset. So we got our zipper on the top. So all in all, very, very cute. As always, the swoon patterns are very cute. So we've got that going for us. And we got a fish tank behind us today. I figured I'd switch it up and film in a different location. And my wind chimes are gone. So this took uh, seven and a half hours to make, which is pretty typical for a pattern that has details like this. So not bad at all. And I gave the pattern a B plus. I'll make some notes about the handles. We also had a note about this. Doesn't really need to be Peltex. I think I can get away with Decoville Light there, so I'll make a note about that. And other than that, I think it's very cute. It's a good size. See, this won't really fit. This is definitely a Kardashian crook of your elbow purse with these handles. So if I made the handles longer, it could be like a real shoulder bag, which I think would be great. Yeah, it's a cute size. The gusset was actually easier for me to do this time. So I don't know if I'm just getting better at them or if this particular gusset was a nice curve that wasn't hard to do. So, yay! <laughs> so that's good. So we are all done with that bag. I'm going to pick an easier bag next week or a faster bag next week so that uh, I have time to do the binding for my quilt. Yay! So I showed you my quilt and I have to cut out the binding and bind the quilt. And I'd really like to get that on the bed sometime soon as it's time to put our winter comforter away. Uh, so I'd love to be able to put that one on the bed. And I still have all those pencil pouches to make. They're all lined up and ready to sew, but I haven't had a chance to sew them yet. And then in the next vlog, my sister and I are going to the LA Yarn Crawl. So I'll take you along with that where I can and show you what that's all about. We have little passports, it's a whole thing, and little presents at each uh, yarn shop that we visit. So looking forward to doing that. I haven't done that before. And I think that's it. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. And as always, thank you for coming and spending time with me. I love it when you spend time with me. And we have quite a few new subscribers, so welcome. I hope you have fun here. We do lots of crafty stuff, so I hope you'll stick around and see what's next. Love you. Bye.